Hi, my name is Adrian Santos. I'm part of the EFPO team. And in this video, I'll be talking about our branching strategy. I'm going to be going over an overview of the branching strategy, feature branches, sprint branches, develop, master, and the life cycle of each. First, I'd like to point out that we do have a branching strategy document under the EFRT project, um, which gives a very good insight and a more in-depth overview of the branching strategy, how does Git work, how to make pull requests, etc. All right, so the first thing I want to get into is the overview of the branching strategy, and then we'll dive into each individual part of it. So let's say that you're in a development team. You will most likely be working in a feature branch most of the time. A feature branch, you create it, you work on your individual feature, um, which is usually attached to a story in our JIRA boards. And then that feature, once you complete it, you will then merge it into your sprint branch, your individual team's sprint branch. So for example, this feature here, EFRT 1700, would get merged into not this sprint branch, because this is for EFWA, but it would be something similar. It would get merged into sprint slash EFRT dash uh, sprint 12 or whatever it is. And essentially the way that uh, you will get it merged into sprint is if your team approves of it. Teams should check each other and make sure that whenever you're merging a feature, it's all working and all test cases pass. So once a feature branch gets merged into a sprint branch, at the end of the sprint, the individual team, somebody from the team, usually the team lead, would make a pull request to merge the sprint branch into our develop branch. The develop branch is our pre-production server branch. It is the branch that will get deployed into our pre-production server for the, both the EFPO team and Professor Sajati to uh, run tests on it, to run both functional tests and to run manual testing. The only way that you can merge into develop is if the EFPO team approves of it. You will make the pull request, you will specify all the information that is required, um, and we do have a we do have a uh, document in which you can take a look at which specifies exactly what you need to have whenever you make a pull request. And I can quickly show this uh, pull request under the EFPO uh, team. Feature documents, pull request submissions. And as you can see, you need to have three items on there. One is worked on, which means just a bullet point list of what you worked on in this sprint, all the stories um, that you worked on. Here you will point out what user stories were completed. You will link the user story to the JIRA board. And then lastly, testing instructions for each individual user story and what the expected output should be. So once you make a pull request, uh, request into develop, you will specify all of this information and then you can go ahead and message one of the members of the EFPO team in which then they will review it, they will give you feedback, um, you would have to solve them, and then the pull request will get merged into develop. Once the uh, sprint branch is merged into develop, all of your code will of course be on develop. A trigger should go off which then will deploy um, your merged code. And within five minutes, you should be able to see it on the live site. As soon as it's on the live site, the EFPO team will then commence doing their functional testing and making sure that everything is working. The next branch that I'm gonna talk about is the master branch. So once you merge everything into develop and the EFPO team writes all their test cases, they test everything, and uh, Professor Sajadi also tests, does his manual testing and approves of everything. Your uh, developer will then cut a release um, into the master branch, meaning there would be a pull request created from develop to master. Once that pull request actually goes through to master, it will then go into our live server. Um, this is technically the server that the actual users would be accessing. They would not have access to the pre-production server, which is everything under the develop branch. They would only have access to everything under the master uh, branch. Um, and that's essentially an overview of how our branching strategy works from feature branches merged into sprint branches. And then at the end of a sprint, these teams sprint branch will merge into develop 
and if everything goes well, develop will merge into master. So as you can see, we went over the overview of the branching strategy, what feature branches, uh, sprint branches, the develop branch, and the master branch are. The last thing I want to talk about is the life cycle of each one of them. So to start off, uh, the fe uh, feature branches, once you actually merge feature branches into your sprint branches, you should actually erase the uh, the actual feature branch. Um, a lot of, uh, there were a lot of issues this semester in which, as you can see, there are a lot of feature branches um, and bug fix branches that were not erased after they were merged to develop, which this causes issues and uh, loads on our server, especially our test and servers, because each feature branch is still registered on the on on Bamboo. Therefore, um, I would suggest that to always make sure as soon as you merge into your Sprint branch, you go ahead and there is actually a button that um, says, and I can even show this right now. If, for example, we go here. And cannot do this one. Let's try this one. Oh, that one has conflicts. I cannot do this one either. Let's try this one maybe. Can't do this one either. Let's try this one. I think I like that. Can't do this one. So I can't do any of them. But once you actually press uh, merge, you will see a button that says um, delete source branch after the merge, meaning that once the merge is, the merge goes through this uh, sprint branch will get erased. And the same applies to sprint branch. Uh, the sprint branch should be erased after it's merged to develop. If for any case you need to rework on the sprint branch, you need that information back, you can always rebase off develop. Um, Bitbucket keeps a history of all the commits made um, and you can easily rebase back to, to any of them. So that's kind of the life cycle of feature branches and sprint branches. Um, the life cycle of develop is essentially once um, once an approval from a sprint branch to develop is made, um, then develop would get uh, the server, the pre-production server would come down, the new information, the new project, the new uh, features would get added, and then it would bring it back up. Um, there are less changes to develop and even lesser changes to master. Um, as we would not want the uh, the actual sites to be coming down and up all the time. And of course, we have to be sure that whatever we merge into develop, um, and especially master, is fully functional, as to it can cause issues for the users.